These are dark times, there is no denying. Our world has perhaps faced no greater threat than it does today. But I say this to our citizenry. We, ever your servants, will continue to defend your liberty and repel the forces that seek to take it from you. You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show. Building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. So we got a whole lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to have some ups and downs on this show. But the thing is, you have to remember, we are not in a good position right now, folks. It is, I know it feels demoralizing, but the American people need to stay strong. You, my listeners, need to stay strong. This is one gigantic psyop against the American people by this fourth branch of government that this corrupt establishment has created for itself. So the American people need to know that all of this is being coordinated to demoralize you. This is what this is. This is a coordinated effort to subvert the 2024 election, to subvert democracy. And so I just want my listeners and anybody listening to this right now that you need to stand strong, shields high, and hold your ground. It's going to get rough. But I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it in the end if you just stay strong. I know it gets tiring. I know it's overwhelming. It gets exhausting. I know. But don't give up. This is our country. We pay for it. We bled for it. This is ours, not theirs. And so I just want my listeners to know that. Tyrants do not like giving up power easily. And so they are not going to just allow the American people to vote in 2024 and get Donald Trump in there and clean all this stuff up. It's not going to happen. It's going to be a rough, rough road. You're going to see things you have never, ever thought you would ever see in this country. And it's going to get rough because we're watching the rise of totalitarianism and fascism in the, in the United States of America. And we have an elite capture of our judiciary system. We have an elite capture of our election process. And we have a uniparty in the corrupt establishment that is overseeing all of this. We have a corrupt bureaucracy that is pulling the strings in the background by unelected officials that want nothing but power and control over the American people. So I just want my listeners to remember, stay strong, And do not get demoralized. That is exactly what they're trying to do. Because I have hope. I do. I see exactly what's going on here. I live, eat, and breathe the news. This is what I do. I've been doing it for a long, long time. I just started the show because I felt like... I felt like it was my duty to inform my fellow citizenry because we cannot have a functioning government if we have a citizenry that's been misinformed or disinformed or uninformed. So it is our duty and it is my duty to inform my fellow Americans. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm telling you, folks, I see something very sinister on the horizon. I really do. However, I do see light at the end of the tunnel. But I have to say it's going to get worse before it gets better. And it's going to get a lot, lot worse. But there's hope. People are starting to see right through the BS. People are starting to see the instability that the Democrats and the Biden administration and this corrupt uniparty establishment has brought this country. They're starting to see it. So you have to have hope. Hold out hope and hold the shields high and remain steady in the phalanx. We got this. So I got an article here by the conservative brief. Trump leads Biden in growing number of polls after indictments and skipping the GOP debate. So former President Donald Trump continues to get good news in his campaign to unseat the man who defeated him in 2020. Trump is now leading President Joe Biden in four national polls, despite the fact that he's been indicted four times and he chose to skip the first Republican presidential primary debate moderated by Fox News last week in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I think him skipping the debate was an excellent idea. And in fact, I will add 
The Trump campaign has ran a flawless campaign as of now. Flawless. If not for the indictments and the kneecaps by this corrupt establishment to Donald Trump, there is no doubt that Donald Trump, you would see in the polls, in a, in a landslide numbers in the polls. You would see landslide numbers in the polls right now. Everything they're doing right now, all the way up until the 2024 election, will be election interference. This is what these people are doing, because tyrants do not hand over power easily. And so they are willing to do anything. This is why you see some of the most unprecedented, uh, wildest things we've ever seen in this country, and the most damaging things we've ever seen in this country, is because they are desperate. I've been saying this for a long time now. Quote, the country's frustration with inflation and wariness toward the idea of Vice President Kamala Harris being an 80-year-old's heartbeat from the presidency are two of many drags on President Biden's reelection chances. Democratic pollsters Douglas Schoen and Carly Cooperman wrote in a Monday column published online by The Hill. And though there are a myriad of problems and issues creating political headwinds for the president, the economy is the number one concern among a majority of voters and more specifically, their own personal economic situations. Inflation fatigue has fostered widespread economic pessimism. Schoen and Cooperman wrote, quote, only a third of voters, 33 percent, believe the U.S. economy is headed in the right direction, while most, 58 percent, say it's on the wrong track. I want to know who are these 33 percent. They have to be all the bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. That is it. That's the only thing I could think of. Nobody I know is out there saying this is a good economy. Nobody honest anyways. Of course, the, left, the lefties are going to say it. But if you're talking about 33% of this country saying this, the, the economy is great, that's not a good number for Joe Biden at all. They added, in addition, voters are nearly twice as likely to say that their personal financial situation has worsened over the last year, 42 percent, rather than improved, 22 percent. This is obvious. Everybody knows that everyone's financial situation is getting worse. We just did an article yesterday. We just read an article on yesterday's show talking about how people, how even people making six figures a year are becoming overwhelmed. So it's no surprise everybody's feeling the, the financial burden except for multimillionaires. So as such, Trump has now moved ahead of Biden in four national surveys, though Biden is within the margin of error in at least two of them. The latest poll from Schoen Cooperman Research showed Trump with 45 percent to Biden's 44 percent in the hypothetical rematch. These results are mirrored in three other major national surveys, including one of them, from Emerson College polling that showed Trump at 46 percent beating Biden 44 percent in a hypothetical matchup. The latest McLaughlin and Associates poll has Trump well ahead of Biden, 47 to 43 percent. And the most recent Reuters survey found Trump beating Biden 38 percent to 32 percent if the election were held this week. The poor showing for Biden comes as more Americans are being abused by higher prices for everything they need, including food, gasoline, clothing and housing, rent, rising crime and a poor southwestern border that has led to a record number of migrants crossing illegally, with tens of thousands being shipped to blue cities from the border. Trump not only maintained significant influence within the Republican Party, but according to a recent report, he is also dominating the early primary race in a manner unparalleled in modern history. This is true. I've never seen a primary candidate beating the other candidates by 50, 60 points. I've never seen that. I've never even heard of that happening. Not certainly anything that I can find. I mean, maybe I can dig into the archives and find when it happened before, but. 50 points? I mean, that's insane. An election primary? I mean, usually, yeah, the, the, you'll have a 10 point swing if it's somebody that's really good that the people really like, somebody that's really stood out to people. But 50, 60 points? It is clear and obvious that the America people have spoken. Why they are continuing these primaries is ludicrous to me. And we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about that in a minute. And I'm going to give you my opinion on all that. So the outlet noted that the current Republican primary cycle is unlike any other 
with a former president leading the race, holding a substantial advantage in the polls and facing competition from his former vice president. Additionally, Trump carries the weight of two federal indictments and two state local indictments. Polling analysts interviewed by the D.C. emphasized the significant contrast between this current GOP primary season and previous cycles, arguing that it is challenging to draw direct comparisons in recent memory. Quote, this GOP primary is truly unprecedented because Trump is not technically an incumbent, but Republican voters seem to be treating him as at least a quasi-incumbent. Kyle Kondike, a polling analyst and managing editor for the nonpartisan Sabato's Crystal Ball at the University of Virginia Center for Politics, told the outlet. This primary is similar to 2016 in the sense that the field is large, meaning that it'll be hard for a non-Trump to consolidate the non-Trump supporters. John McHenry, a vice president and North Star Opinion Research and GOP polling analyst, underscored the extraordinary nature of the Republican primary by emphasizing that Trump's impact on reshaping the party, coupled with his indictment by the Manhattan District Attorney, has played a substantial role in the former president's impressive standing in the polls. Quote, this really is a unique cycle, at least since we've used primaries and caucuses as the primary vehicle to nominate our presidential candidates. In that time, we haven't had an incumbent president lose re-election and run again, much less lead in the polls. What does that tell you? That tells me that the American people know that the 2020 election was filled with shenanigans. And, and abnormalities. Everybody knows in their gut. I don't know how to explain it. Everyone knows, everyone's intuition is telling them that something wasn't right with the 2020 election and they want a rematch. They want to redo without COVID mandates, without mass mail and balloting, without Mark Elias, without Mark Zuckerberg's $500 million, without Perkins Coy going around changing election laws before the election. They want a rematch. But that's just one point. I think there's several points why Donald Trump is beating Joe Biden in the polls right now. And honestly, to me, it's not actually surprising that Trump is favored over Biden. Because first of all, you have to look at the level of destruction. This, to me, is the most important. I feel like our country is on the brink of collapse. And I'm not talking about our country economically. I'm not talking about with war, even though those two are factors. I'm talking about the entire damn collapse because of corruption. Because of this elite capture of our entire damn system. Every single government institution we have has been corrupted. Our whole, our whole damn culture has been corrupted. And so I think people see this and they know that something's not normal. I think people see that this country is going in the wrong direction, but not only in the wrong direction, but they see this country getting ready to fall off a cliff. And so the first question they ask themselves is, OK, well, when did this all happen? When did this all start? And then they're like, well, if you think about it, it started as soon as Joe Biden was elected, as soon as Democrats got power. So they're correlating the two. And yes, correlation does equal causation in this in this regard. And so so secondly, I think people got a firsthand comparison of a Trump economy and a Biden economy. And honestly, there is no comparison. You cannot compare these two administrations. It is a night and day difference. Night and day. This administration sucks. Their ideas suck. The whole damn party sucks. And I used to be a Democrat. I know I say this all the time, but it's important for people to hear it because it's not too late. Leave this party because it is corrupting you. If you are a Democrat, leave the party. I'm not saying you have to vote Republican. I'm not saying you even have to vote for Donald Trump. I'm not saying anything. But the party is not what it used to be. And it is corrupting your mind. It is it is influencing you and manipulating you to support things that you you know you don't want to support. And I'm not talking about abortion. That problem has been around forever. I get that that's a stance that is it is a great issue that's always going to divide Republicans and Democrats. I'm talking about the Democrat Party convincing you that men can give birth, convincing you of falsehoods. They are 
driving full speed towards the cliff. And instead of hitting the brakes, they're smashing on the gas. So like I said, I think people see a comparison because during the Trump administration, people really weren't paying attention to politics, not like they are now, not in the millions and millions and millions like they are now. People weren't paying attention during the Barack Obama years. Yes, there's always been political activists. People like me have always been paying attention, but I'm talking people as a whole really weren't paying attention. They were just going to work, doing their thing, living their life because government was not affecting them that much. And so they, they, there was no need for them to get involved. And so they only got involved when Donald Trump won the presidency. And then the media, the leftist Pravda media, the Democrat media, which is essentially now the media for the administrative state, state-run media, they convinced people that Donald Trump was bad and evil. Regardless of the condition of this country getting better, through the Trump administration, these people did not pay attention to the conditions of the country. They were just saying, I hate Trump. This is when Trump derangement syndrome infected millions and millions of people. They didn't realize that they were living in the best years this country had seen in decades. And I remember saying it. I remember saying it in the very beginning. I was telling my, my Democrat friends, I was telling my Democrat colleagues, because I had voted for Donald Trump at this point already. But I was telling them, like, look, you know, every time they would talk smack about Donald Trump, you know, grabbing women by the peas and all the, all the stuff, all the, the lies that they were being fed by the media. I said, yes, you believe what you want about the lies from the media. But I'm telling you right now, on paper, in every single metric, this country is doing better. The economy's doing better. The people are doing better. The people are living better lives. Their quality of life is improving. People were saving money. Peace was breaking out across the world. Wages were increasing. Minorities, minority wages were increasing. Job numbers, unemployment rate was increasing in the, in the minority communities. The minority communities had it better during the Trump administration than they had in decades, even all throughout the Obama administration. And people felt it. But these people, the, the Democrats' hatred for Donald Trump blinded them from all the good things that were happening in this country. So what happened? Their hatred empowered them, forced them to vote for Joe Biden. The media forced these people by using propaganda and manipulating their minds, corrupting their brains, corrupting their thoughts, forced these people to vote for Joe Biden. Even though they were all warned that I'm telling you, a vote for Joe Biden, I remember saying this also to my friends, to my Democrat colleagues, a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for the destruction of this country. Every good thing that has happened to this country and its people the last four years will be reversed. And they didn't listen. They didn't listen. They voted for Joe Biden. And exactly what I said would happen has happened all the way from the economy, all the way to us going into a new war. I told them, I said, Joe Biden, the Democrats are going to get us into war. They're going to they're going to destroy the energy market. They're going to cause a war on fossil fuels. They're going to destroy the economy through massive spending. They're going, I, everything that I told them was going to happen, happened. And now, now, only now, are they coming to me and saying, yeah, you were right. This is awful. So this is why I say this is the reason why people are starting to notice is because they have a direct comparison of Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And mostly it's the economy. And then I'm going to guess after that is the the instability, the the destruction of their country. They know we are not heading in the right direction. They see the destruction on the horizon. They see that this country is on the brink of collapse. That's going to be number two. So number one is always the economy. When you start affecting people's lives and their ability to put food on the table, when you affect them from being able to take their family out to dinner or out to a movie because you, you, you jacked up the inflation so high that people can't even save money anymore. Every single penny people have are going into just necessities, is going into just survival. Everybody's in survival mode right now, unless you're a multimillionaire. So the economy is by far the most important to people. And I'm telling you, the one thing you don't mess with is people's money. 
that's going to impact their decision a lot. And now they can see the comparison. During Trump administration, they were saving money. They had cheap gas. Why were they saving money? Because gas was cheap. Because groceries were cheap. Because inflation was low and wages were increasing. They did not have an inflation rate that was surpassing their wage growth. So people's money was actually going further on top of them getting wage increases. So they had the ability to save money, which meant they had the extra money to go take their family out to dinner, to go to a movie. That does incredible things for families, folks. Family time and spending quality time with the family builds positive relationships. And this administration just took all that away, took it all away. Whether it's taking your boat out or, like I said, just going to a movie. This administration took all that away and made it much, much more difficult to do. And everybody can feel it. Everybody. One way or the other, everyone feels it. Granted, some people still might go to the movies, still might go out to dinner. We certainly do. But it's just harder to do. This administration made everybody's life harder. So without a doubt, the economy is the number one thing. And so people got a comparison of Trump's economy versus Biden's economy. And there is no comparison. And thirdly, everyone can see with their own eyes this guy's cognitive decline. The guy can't even find his way off a stage. He cannot complete sentences. This is one of the main things you hear from Democrat voters is that they say he is too old. 77% a new poll came out. 77% of Democrats think Joe Biden is too old to run for president. That is a huge number of Democrats. So regardless of the economy, regardless of everything I just cited, At the very least, the most radical Democrats agree that Joe Biden is too old, but it's not his age. It's his dementia. There's plenty of people out there. I know 90 year olds that look like they're in their 50s. Joe Biden may be 81 years old, but he is a rough 81. He has dementia. I don't care who you are. I don't care what age you are. If you have dementia, you're not going to be able to function normally. Because your brain isn't working normally and everybody can see it. Everybody. So if there's one universal attribute that everyone can point to Joe Biden for is his cognitive decline. This guy's mumbling and bumbling and foolishness everywhere he goes and everywhere he talks. Everybody notices that. And you're not going to be able to convince these people otherwise. Because why? Because they haven't given a cognitive test, they haven't given a list of his prescription medications, and they won't. Because they know he has dementia. They know what medications he takes. Releasing that information to the public, which I think Democrats should demand, by the way, if this guy's going to run for president, if this is going to be your nominee, do you not want to know if this guy has dementia or not? Unfortunately, we have people so corrupted, we have people so consumed by Trump derangement syndrome that they don't care if the guy has dementia. This is why you have people like John Fetterman in Congress. These people, they don't care about the leader. It's all about the tribe. It's all about winning to retain power. That is it. My team wins. That's it. Vote blue no matter who. That's That's the only people saying vote blue no matter who. The people in the Republican Party don't say that. You got 18 people running for the Republican nominee. How many do you have on the Democrat side? Joe Biden, Joe Biden, and Joe Biden. You have RFK Jr. that they want to keep off the ballot. They're trying to do the same thing to RFK Jr. that they did to Bernie Sanders. These people do not believe in democracy. They hate democracy. They do not want people to have a choice for who they want to be president. The only choice they give them is blue and blue. Team blue and team blue. That is it. Because it it doesn't require, the Democrat Party does not require to have a formidable leader. It's not required to have a president that actually helps this country because that's not their goal. Their goal is to retain power, to force their will onto everyone else, to change this country. You don't need a leader that can speak and and complete sentences and walk and find his way off a stage to change this country. You just need somebody to stand there and sign whatever they put under a schnoz. And Joe Biden fits that description perfectly. The guy's been on vacation for almost half of his time in office. This is exactly who they want. They don't care that Joe Biden's on vacation all the time. They don't even mention it. 
They don't care because that's not what they need him for. All they need is an empty suit. But the more rational, reasonable Democrats are starting to realize that this is a bad idea. Joe Biden is too old and you can't do this. And having a president with dementia is probably not a good idea. And last but not least, I think the reason why Donald Trump is leading in the polls is not only can everyone see Joe Biden's dementia, but everybody can see the weaponization of this justice system. They can see that the Democrat Party and this corrupt fourth branch of government in our nation's capital is weaponizing our justice system against their political opponents. Like we're living in some kind of a American Soviet freaking union, man. Some third world banana republic. This administration and the Democrat Party combined have been the most destructive political force this country has ever seen. And the one thing I think everybody is feeling unilaterally is that the current state of our country right now is unsustainable. This is why Donald Trump's poll numbers are going up. And I'm telling you, they're going to go up and up and up. People see the instability in this nation. They see something is not right. You don't have to be in the politics to know that something is not right. You don't have to live, eat, and breathe the news to know that something is very, very wrong right now. All you have to do is go to the gas station, get gas on your way to the grocery store. When you're done from the grocery store, pay your electric bill. And after you pay your electric bill, look at the interest rates on your credit card statement. And then after that, look at your bank account. And you will see just how bad things are. So it's, it's no doubt why Donald Trump's poll numbers are going up. And I expect them to go up even more. While at the same time, Donald Trump's numbers are going up, you're going to see this corrupt establishment getting more and more desperate to stop him. This is not an election of, of Democrats versus Republicans. This is an election of the people versus the system. The people versus this corrupt, uniparty, Washington, D.C. establishment machine. That is what this election is about. If you vote Democrat, you are voting for the continuation of the destruction of this country, the destruction of your quality in life, and the possibility that this country may just go into another world war. That is what you're voting for when you vote Democrat. It's not even, you're not even voting Democrat anymore. You're voting for the system. You're voting for this corrupt fascist state, which means you would have to agree that you like the conditions you're living in. And according to the polls, that is decreasing by the day. A vote for Republican, which apparently looks like it's going to be Donald Trump, is the American people. This guy is taking all the blows. He is getting punched in the face. He, they are on top of him, just clobbering his ass over and over and over again. And the American people are standing on the sidelines waiting for the comeback. The only thing the American people can do is cheer and root for Donald Trump to encourage our, our warrior. It's like we're watching Donald Trump fight an entire damn system by himself. And everybody in his orbit is getting, is getting arrested. This is a, a corrupt fascist regime trying to destroy the American people and destroy the American way, to destroy everything, to destroy people's rights, their freedom of speech, their due process, their right to a fair trial, their constitution, their democracy, their constitutional republic. Everything is on the line. That is what this election is going to be about. So I want to give I want to give another example of why I continue to call this this Biden administration and this Democrat Party the most destructive political force this country has ever seen. We are watching the rise of fascism and totalitarianism. So a Proud Boys member just got 22 years in prison. And wasn't even at the Capitol. This is what I'm talking about. This is what the American people can see. They know this is not right. They know this is not justice. This is an elite capture of our judicial system. 
There is no reason why the D.C. courts, the second highest court of the land, need to be consolidated in our nation's capital. A court system that handles all the, the city's problems. It's, it's been the whole damn thing has been corrupted. It has been captured by elite fascists. These judges have been have been propagandized. I don't know what is wrong with these judges. I really don't. I really don't. Nobody can sit there and tell me that this is justice. This is not justice. It's just not. Because the American people can see. The American people sat by and watched all through 2020 riots, burning courthouses down, burning police precincts, killing people, rioting, looting, mobbing. They seen it all through 2020. And so what it's it, it's like they they expect the American people to just memory hole that that entire summer that they adopted the term summer of love. The summer of love where people watched the destruction, four billion dollars in damage done to cities all all throughout the nation, like one giant riot. Buildings burning, people dying, businesses closing down. People remember all the businesses that had to board up their windows because of the riots. There wasn't even enough wood. There were so many businesses boarding up their windows, there wasn't enough plywood. I remember that. That's the kind of stuff that happens in Florida before hurricanes. So you're talking about these cities preparing for hurricane-like conditions because of the riots in 2020. And they want, us, they want everyone to just forget that? While they're giving people like this, this Proud Boys member 22 years in prison? People that murder people don't even get that much. And the worst thing is, is none of these people that watched the destruction of these cities, that watched BLM and Antifa do $4 billion in damage and kill people, nobody sees any justice happening out of that entire summer of rioting. Nobody, nobody even recalls anybody being indicted. It's a massive, a massive injustice on this country. Massive. And so this is what's frustrating to people. They've never seen anything like this before. They've never seen one political party get treated differently than the other political party. This is the first time in this country we've seen the Lady Justice remove the blindfold at such a mass scale like this. No Republican is going to get a fair trial in Washington, D.C. None. None. I'm sorry. Because the Obama administration and the Biden administration, the Democrat Party has learned a long, long time ago that if you want to get the results you want, if you want to force change, you need to pack the courts. And that's exactly what they did. This is why no Republican or conservative better ever find themselves in front of one of these judges in Washington, D.C. They will throw the book at you. They will send you away for life in a federal prison. If you have anything to do with being a Republican, a conservative, and if you support Trump, if you voted for Trump and they find that out, you are done. What we are watching right here is a massive, a massive injustice in our country being done at the hands of Democrats, at the hands of Obama voting, Biden supporting, Biden donating judges in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. This is why the founders did not want a consolidated court system in the Capitol. These courts need to be broken up and scattered out throughout the country. Every single one of these J6, these political prisoners, isn't that sad? I have to call them political prisoners. We have political prisoners in our country. Every single one of these political prisoners needs to be pardoned immediately. That needs to be the first thing Donald Trump does. And the people that committed violence need to be tried in their home state, in their own courts, in front of a jury of their own peers. Not this crap we're watching right here. This is disgusting behavior we're watching from our judges. Disgusting. And so how can you have a guy getting 22 years that wasn't even there at the Capitol? It's, it's insane. And what drives people nuts the most, people can see the disparate treatment between Democrats, Antifa and BLM rioters, and Republican rioters at the Capitol. You guys remember those two lawyers that firebombed a police cruiser? Yeah, guess how much they got? 15 months. 
15 months. They're not even in prison right now. 15 months. So I got an article here from Town Hall. Lefty lawyer who firebombed police car gets prison sentence. It's beyond absurd. It's a hat tip to Matt Vespa. It's a little bit older. It's November 18th, 2022. And in this article, you're going to see the different treatment. You're going to see how Proud Boy members get treated and how Democrat activists get treated, how, how Antifa and BLM protesters get treated. So Matt says, let's not handle these two with kid gloves. They're domestic terrorists who should have had the book thrown at them. I'm referring to the left wing lawyers who threw Molotov cocktails at a New York City Police Department cruiser in the summer of 2020, which seems like a decade ago. That summer of leftist violence and anarchy was spurred by the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. In the Big Apple, Euroj Raman, a public interest lawyer, and her accomplice, Collinford Mattis, decided to firebomb some cop cars. Both were arrested after the attack and after a lengthy legal drama pleaded guilty to conspiracy charges and possessing a destructive device. Miss Roman was facing anywhere from five to 10 years in prison, but the Biden administration intervened, calling for leniency because that's how liberals think would-be murderers and domestic terrorists should be treated, I guess. She'll only get a 15-month jail sentence via the Washington Free Beacon. Quote, Ruha Rahman, a public interest lawyer who firebombed a police cruiser during the 2020 George Floyd riots, was sentenced to just 15 months in prison on Friday after the Biden Justice Department intervened on her behalf, pressing the court to issue a sentence below the guidelines that called for 10 years. So imagine that. You have prosecutors and judges throwing the books, persecuting people that weren't even there at the Capitol, sentencing them to 22 and the prosecution asking for 33 years and nobody steps in to say, oh, this may be a little too much. Oh, don't you think you're maybe overcharging or don't you think you're over prosecuting? Nobody steps in for these people. But for if you're a Democrat, Antifa or BLM that firebombs police cruisers and riots during the summer of 2020, you have the Justice Department, the Biden administration stepping in, referring sentences below the guidelines. U.S. District Judge Brian Cogan of the Eastern District of New York handed down the sentence to a packed courtroom in Brooklyn where Rahman's allies gathered in solidarity. Rahman, who faced up to five years in prison, told supporters the sentence wasn't the result we wanted. Her attorney, Peter Baldwin, said Rahman's defense team was, quote, obviously disappointed with the result, but we are excited that Ruaj can move on to the next phase of her life. Must be nice, right? Well, guess who's not moving to the next phase of their life? All of these political prisoners, these hundreds, if not thousands of people that have been arrested and persecuted by this Biden administration and this corrupt Department of Justice in our nation's capital. These people don't get to move on to the next phase of their life. You know where some of these people are going? They're going to prison for the rest of their life. For what? Walking into the Capitol building? For being let in to the Capitol building by police officers? To, because they were at a protest where violence was incited by undercover FBI informants. So you're talking about people that got caught up in a false flag operation conducted by the United States government, and they get sentenced to 30 years, 20 years in prison. Meanwhile, these two rioters during the George Floyd riots firebomb a police cruiser and had more bombs in their trunk. And apparently we're going to keep doing it to other police cruisers. They get 15 months on behalf of the Biden administration, stepping in and referring lower sentencing. This is disgusting, man. So Rahman and her accomplice, Collinford Mattis, leveraged their connections to top universities, white shoe law firms, and the Obama administration to win sympathy from liberal elites. They were the subjects of glowing profiles in national media during their prosecution and struck a sweetheart deal with the Biden Justice Department, which in a rare move intervened to ask the court to go easy on them after the Trump administration had pressed for an aggressive prosecution. The Justice Department declined to comment. Given the results of the past elections, voters thought the law and order issues should be handled like this, going soft on those poor, suffering domestic terrorists who are trying to kill police officers. This is what I'm talking about. So people that firebombed a police cruiser get 15 months because they're part of the cause. They're part of the right system. They're part of the Democrats. But yet people that are in the Proud Boys that weren't even there at the Capitol get 22 years in prison. 
because they're not part of the Democrat Party? I thought justice was supposed to be blind here, folks. It is supposed to be blind, and it's not. Lady Justice has removed the blindfold, and all she sees is red. So I pity any Republican or conservative that has to go to court in Washington, D.C. It has turned into a fascist regime. It is disgusting what is happening. Shame on all these judges, because what's going to come out in 10 years from now is that the January 6th riot was a false flag operation conducted by the United States government against its own people. And what are these judges going to think? What's going to happen to these judges when the information comes out that the riot was incited by undercover FBI agents that we know were there? We know there are undercover FBI informants, but nobody can explain why. That's the question I have. Why were there undercover FBI informants inciting violence at our Capitol that day? Who let these rioters inside the Capitol? So you're saying to me that if I went to the Capitol and and mind you, I almost did. I don't know if I ever told my listeners this. I almost went. I remember calling my brother and I asked him, do you think I should go to the Capitol? Because I was pissed off. I was pissed. These elections were a sham. The 2020 elections were garbage. They were they were a giant sham on the American people, a boot stomp, a kick in the teeth to our democracy. And so I was going to go there and I was going to protest. It's a good thing I didn't because I may not be speaking to you right now. But what happens to these people that were let into the Capitol building? How can we sit here and watch footage of protesters being escorted around the Capitol building by police, by Capitol police officers, and then those people get years, years in prison, solitary confinement and treated like domestic terrorists? How is that possible? Nobody firebombed anything there. Nobody had any weapons. There were no guns. That was not an insurrection, and everybody knows it. So how can you charge somebody with insurrection that wasn't actually an insurrection? This is what happens when you have a corrupt justice system with corrupt judges that have been corrupted by the media, just like everyone else that supports this jihad against Republicans and conservatives, that supports this jihad against the MAGA movement. They don't like Trump supporters, they hate them. They despise anybody that likes or voted for Donald Trump. They despise them. They want them gone. They want their lives destroyed. And in probably most cases, want them dead. Joe Biden was supposed to give this country unity and gave us a freaking fascist banana republic. This is why Donald Trump's poll numbers are going up. People do not like to see this massive, massive injustice happening in our nation's capital to these protesters that were at the Capitol that day. Were some violent? Yeah, probably. But this is not justice. This is not justice. These people need to be sent home to their home states and tried in front of a jury of their peers. Not in front of a radicalized, fascist, Soviet-like judge that thinks these people are domestic terrorists because they've been watching MSNBC and CNN. This is what happens, by the way, when you have propagandized media. This is what happens when you have a media apparatus that's an arm of the Democrat Party and this establishment and this corrupt, corrupt fourth branch establishment in our government. So you guys want to know what you want to know why I keep saying that we're entering fascism? So some key characteristics of fascism include totalitarianism. Fascist regimes seek to exert complete control over all aspects of society, including politics, the economy, culture, and individual behavior. Which party has complete control over all aspects of our society? Which party has control over the economy? Which party has control over the culture? The Democrat Party. Which party is completely obsessed with one man, which party are, is acting like a bunch of, of Stasi uh, secret police members? The Democrat Party. These people have been on a, on a jihad against Donald Trump for almost a decade. A decade, folks. They've been doing this, and it's not going to stop. The only way this stops is if somebody comes in and says enough is enough. And the only people that can do that is the Supreme Court of the United States. So another characteristic is suppression of dissent. Which party is the party of censorship? 
real clear politics just came out with a poll. 70 percent of Democrats support mass government censorship. Democrats have become the party of censorship. So fascist regimes use repression, censorship and violence to silence opposition and eliminate dissenting voices. Which party made businesses board up all their buildings just in case Donald Trump won? Trust me, those businesses weren't boarding up their windows in the case Joe Biden won. Because guess what happened? Joe Biden won. There was no riots. What would have happened if Donald Trump won the 2020 election? All those businesses that boarded up their windows would have been vindicated for doing so. Because there would have been riots in the street. The George Floyd riot in 2020 wouldn't have held a candle to the riots we would have seen if Donald Trump would have won the 2020 election. Therefore, the Democrats are the party of violence. They are the party of repression. And they are the party that silences their opposition using violence. The Democrats are the party of eliminating dissenting voices. Period. They want censorship. They support censorship. So here's a good one. Which party uses propaganda as a common tool? The Democrat Party. The Democrat Party owns 95% of the media. This is why people were lied to. This is why we are in the situation we are in. It is all to blame on this corrupt administrative state media that we have that I call Pravda Media. Our media right now is more similar to the Pravda Media of the Soviet Union than any other time in, in modern history. Our media directly coordinates with our government. They are state-run media. Which party got caught using Twitter to censor dissenting opinions on Twitter? Which party used social media platforms to censor people before the election? The Democrat Party. I could go over example after example of why the Democrat Party is the party of fascism. Joe Biden is the fascist. The Democrats are guilty of everything that they accuse their opponents of being guilty of. Here's another characteristic, corporatism. Fascist governments may involve the merging of government and corporate interests with the state exerting control over private businesses. Hmm, which party's doing that? Which party has control of all the corporations? Which party has been weaponizing corporations the last 20 years? Which party uses corporations to push their narrative? Which party uses corporations to to put forth their agenda, to push their agenda? The Democrat Party. Which corporations do Republicans have? It is no doubt, ladies and gentlemen, we are watching the rise of fascism in this country, and the fascists are the Democrats. There's tons of examples pointing to that. Tons. And I mean, the list is a mile long. There's only one party that's trying to censor people. There's only one party that's trying to suppress dissent. There's only one party that uses their leadership to force the will onto the American people. There's only one party that uses propaganda. There's only one party that uses corporatism to push forth their narrative and push forth their agenda. There's only one party that seeks to exert complete control over all aspects of society. That is the Democrat Party. They do have control over all aspects of our society, every single one of them. From academia all the way to Hollywood. They have the corporations. They have the, the, me, the social media outlets. They have everything. And so this is why you're watching the destruction happen right now. And I'm telling you folks, we have to defeat the Democrats in the 2024 election. And it's not, a, it's not enough to just defeat them. This party needs destroyed. I can't wait for Mark Levin's book to come out called The Democrat Party Hates America. I cannot wait. I know that book is going to be filled with a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about right now. Because Mark Levin is awesome at pointing out just how bad the Democrat Party is and just how bad it's always been. Always. It's always been like this. But now they have more control because now they use social media and the media and the academia, the colleges and universities to manipulate the younger generation. And now this is the result. This is the culmination of years of academic capture. This is the culmination of years of brainwashing and manipulating our young kids 
in the schools, in the universities, and they come out radical leftists trying to give their lives purpose and meaning. And instead of worshiping God, they worship government. Instead of worshiping God, they worship climate change. They worship the Democrat Party. These people are nuts. They are sick. Anybody that supports sending somebody away for 22 years that wasn't even at the Capitol that day, anybody that charges somebody for conspiring to overthrow the government, one man, one man that wasn't even there at the Capitol, and everyone could see that there was no insurrection. Everyone knows it was not an insurrection, but yet this guy gets 22 years. Everybody can see the massive injustices that are happening all around us. And I just hope the American people make a course correction in 2024. I hope they do. And so it's, it's these polls are going to start showing Donald Trump going up into the polls and it's going to do nothing but go up and up and up from here. And the more he goes up, the more they're going to try and destroy him. And just like I always say, this is not an election about Republicans versus Democrats. This is about an election that is either going to decide the collapse or the recovery of our country. Because I'm telling you, if this elite fourth branch of government, the ruling class, if this corrupt establishment manages to cheat in the 2024 election and Joe Biden wins, you are going to watch what we've been witnessing the last three years 10 times worse. 10 times worse. They will hold nothing back. Joe Biden won't even be the leader. They'll put in Kamala Harris. It's not going to be like anything you've ever seen before. We were, we're not even going to know who's running our country. These people would have officially have captured every single aspect of our culture and our country. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't even have elections in 2028. I really don't. And just like Tucker Carlson says, he thinks we're going to be getting into a kinetic hot war with Russia just so that they can invoke war powers and stall our elections to interfere in our elections. These people will stop at nothing. Don't put anything past these people. They will do anything to stop Donald Trump from happening. They got a club that they created and they, nobody's invited. And that club is in danger. And the biggest threat they see to that club is the American people. If not for Donald Trump, the American people would not know any of this. It would have been business as usual, everybody suffering, everybody living paycheck to paycheck while these people went out and became millionaires. Our government would have continued to be the cesspool of corruption. If not for Donald Trump pulling back the curtain on these people and forcing them to pull off their masks and show everybody exactly who they are. That's why Donald Trump's numbers are going up. So... All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we got right now. That was just a quick rant that I seen this morning. I'm going to post this today. I'm working on a full show. I got a, we got a lot to talk about. Um, we're going to be talking about the Supreme Court, how the Democrats are targeting the Supreme Court, and how the Supreme how Sotomayor is probably one of the most corrupt justices we have in the court system right now. But yet, all they're doing is targeting the the conservative judges. Nobody finds that a little bit concerning. Nobody finds it concerning how Democrats are targeting the conservative judges on the Supreme Court, but not the Democrats. Like, it is clear and obvious they're trying to overtake our Supreme Court. They're trying to overthrow a Supreme Court. This is why you have protesters protesting at judges' homes. This is what the Democrats do. You are watching the fascist takeover of our country. I don't know how, I don't know what other examples people need to see. But this is, I, I, I mean, there's surely not enough examples that the left could see to think that we're watching, we're turning into a fascist regime. But I'm telling the regular rational people out there that may be listening to the show, if you're wondering what is happening to your country, it's getting turned into a fascist third world banana republic is what's happening. And if we don't change course immediately, it's going to get a lot worse. So we're going to be talking about the Supreme Court and how it's being targeted by the Democrats. And I wanted to touch down on this Tucker Carlson and this Barack Obama having sex with men, which is crazy. Like, listen, this story was before I was a Democrat. So, you know, obviously, because the media is so good, I had no idea about this. I had heard the rumors, you know, about Obama being gay, but I did not know this guy Sinclair had come out, did a lie detector test, and did an affidavit claiming he was telling the truth that he slept with Barack Obama and smoked crack with him. 
So we're going to be talking about that. Tucker Carlson had him on for an interview, I think, last night. So we we got a lot of stuff we're going to be talking about on the next show. I was just reading an article about Donald Trump's poll numbers going up, and I, it really started making me think about why, what what is happening. And it actually gave me a little bit of hope because it seems like the American people are starting to see exactly what is happening here. And so that also made me think about how much more desperate these people are going to get to keep Donald Trump out of the office. And that's why I know it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's because the better Donald Trump does, the bigger threat he is. You guys remember just a year and a half ago that Donald Trump couldn't even win. They wanted Donald Trump to run against Joe Biden because Donald Trump couldn't win. Now. After they seen his poll numbers increasing, they seen Donald Trump is going to win. This is when they started indicting. This is when they started the jihad. This is why they this is when the continuation of everything they were doing during the Trump administration with the impeachments and congr- uh, the congressional investigations and everything. They just flipped that switch back on. It's all the same players. It's the same damn people behind the same damn tactics. They're doing the same thing, except they're well more coordinated and they have radicalized judges in Washington, D.C. They're using radical judges in Washington, D.C. that were packed, put there, which we're also going to be talking about this Judge Chokin from D.C., which is overseeing the January 6th case. We're going to be talking about her and her background, her parents' background more specifically, which is kind of concerning. These are not Donald Trump is not going to be able to get a fair trial in Washington, D.C. There's no way. And anybody that thinks that is not being honest with themselves. No Republican, no conservative is going to get justice in Washington, D.C. It's just not going to happen. It's been too corrupted. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about all that stuff on the next show. So I'm going to be posting these articles in my podcast description like always. You guys go in, read these, read the polls I'm going to post. They're actually quite interesting in how they got up and how they got their numbers. Uh, there's several polls that you can look at. I'll post them in the podcast description. If you guys got anything you want me to check out, send me a message. Let me know how the show's going. I would really appreciate some feedback from you guys. I always do. Um, I'm trying to get as much content out there every day. I'm trying to do a show every day. It's not easy, but I'm going to keep trying for you guys because, you know, we got a lot of stuff to talk about and we got a lot of people we need to inform. So, Um, Yeah, I would appreciate the feedback. No, there's, you know, constructive criticism is always appreciated here. And so I'm going to be working on a show right after this. So make sure you tune in for that show. And I want you guys to have a good day. Have a great week. God bless you. And God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.